Hey, Coach, with so many people out of the rotation, can you get a proper evaluation of how the offense and defense is doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I definitely think so. I mean, obviously missing some, you know, key ingredients for sure, which uh, makes it a little bit tougher. But, you know, tonight we didn't have our pop for sure. You know, we weren't playing at the pace that we needed to. Guys have been training hard, just kind of fell flat today. You can see that early in the first quarter. Uh, we weren't getting into the paint as much as we could. Um, obviously, we were taking the ball of the net, so our defense, you know, I told these guys, nights like this when we don't have our pace, you know, we still can control the defensive activity. We turn it up in the third quarter, but obviously the Hornets had a heck of a night. Um, but I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from all these guys. I mean, you know, the, the movement's been there. we got to initiate, you know, uh, some advantages a little bit differently, you know, and that's stuff that we'll just continue to add. Um, uh, but stressing the movement, the pace, we just fell a little bit flat today. So how do you assess uh, the first half defense in particular? Like you say, you turn it up in the second half, but in the first half, what do you assess? Like, what did you get out of uh, watching it? Yeah, I mean, I think probably hand in hand, just being flat. Um, you know, I didn't think we had the the energy probably on both sides of the floor. Give them credit. I mean, Miller was shooting the heck out of the ball. I thought they had really good ball movement. I think, I don't know, six or seven, eight threes in the first quarter. So that definitely hindered our ability to get out, but that's no excuse. You know, we were taking the ball of the net a little bit much, but our shifts weren't there. We were getting blown by one on one a little bit too much. Um, so our defense was pretty compromised. They were actually getting the best of both worlds. And, you know, we still had a three point game, and then they just, you know, was just kind of an onslaught in that second quarter where we didn't have our pace, our defensive activity, you know, we weren't talking as much. Um, got a little bit better in that third quarter, but definitely wasn't enough for 48 minutes. Coach, last week you and I talked about your defense and just getting out, um, creating chaos on that, on defense and getting out in transition. Seemed like the game started out that way, um, and you continue to have that throughout the game, but wasn't – you know, converting those points in transition. What were your thoughts tonight on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's got to be a calling card for us is our competitiveness on the defensive side, our activity. Um, you know, I don't think it was there in the first quarter. Um, we got to have it for 48 minutes. Uh, we paid the price, give the Hornets credit. I mean, they took advantage of a lot of our missed shifts or, you know, kind of, you know, poor on-ball defense. Um, so, you know, this, this is the learning curve, you know, for us right now. So we got to get out there. I think our guys have been training hard, but we got to be able to sustain that effort level um, on both sides of for because we're asking them a lot play faster than we've done in the past you know our rotations have to be on point you know our movement on the offense we're moving a lot more off the ball than we've done in the past you know we're trying to create more 50 50 ball so we're asking them to do a lot so they're kind of calibrating you know day to day and um you know we'll get better from this for sure taylor it looked like uh when, when you pulled zach out it was an extended teaching moment how important are those you know that, that sort of give and take how important is that for him uh coming into this league yeah very important i mean obviously you know i think he can have a substantial impact he's learning a lot you know obviously he's trying to figure out the speed we're playing with the spacing you know i mean we're just kind of gradually installing stuff as a team and you know he's coming from a different environment you know at purdue with a different style and i'm just trying to continue to encourage him on the great things i'm seeing and you know i keep talking about the speed of the game and the physicality of the game, you know, just trying to know that, you know, guys are going to be trying to push him off his spot. So how he's trying to, you know, kind of dictate where he wants to go on the offensive side, especially on the interior. And, uh, you know, guys are swarming him and finishing with contact and, you know, not shying away from that stuff. So uh, just trying to provide him that feedback of like the nuggets that I'm seeing that, you know, he's trying to do the right things. And when he may not be getting the results, you know, what he can do differently in the, in the, in the next opportunity. Coach, uh, going into that fourth quarter, they were flirting with like 50% from the three-point mm -hmm. line. You were dominated with points in the paint, 50 to 30. Just what's going to be your teaching moments on defending the paint, protecting the perimeter, chasing them off the line, that sort of thing, and then the coming days. Yeah, I mean, we'll watch the film, and, you know, our point of attack defense has got to get better. You know, our pick and roll, you know, we're, we're not trying to throw everything out there and just adjust, you know, every single time. we got to be good at our base defense. I mean, it's only our second preseason game. So our on-ball defense can be a lot better, including the pick and rolls. Our shifts have got to be better. Um, you know, they hit some tough ones in our face for sure, you know, but then we can't give up all those points in the paint. If the team makes 18 threes, but then they score 50 points in the paint, it's going to be a bad recipe. So uh, we work on protecting the paint. That's first and foremost. And then how can we still improve with our on-ball defense, pick and roll defense that even, you know, limit their threes too. Uh, Taylor, so it looks like uh, in those pick and roll coverages, you had Zach and Jay coming up towards the level of the screen, even taking on some switches at some points and having some good moments. Jess, what are you learning about 
those guys in those coverages as you're gathering more information on those guys. My biggest thing is I want to challenge these guys. I mean, they're definitely going to be in our you know center field coverage and up and dropping and staying below rollers. And I think Zach's been doing a pretty good job. So as Jay, our shifts on the weak side have to be a little bit better. You know, so we're not giving up stuff at the rim, or you know, our, our guy at the top has to shift better. So we're not giving up corner threes. All things that you know we're, we're addressing right now and trying to clean up. But then I want to see them you know guard on the perimeter. You know, I want to see them switch and take on that challenge and you know put them those uncomfortable comfortable positions that maybe they're not used to and I think Zach's been doing a great job and as he's learning personnel tendencies you know he'll be even better prepared but for the most part I think he's doing a good job one-on-one -on -one and even putting Jay in those positions too guys that traditionally play back by the rim this is the opportunity to see what these guys are capable of a uh, two-part question one how is Marcus Smart doing it in two uh, it kind of similar to like with John the last game he comes back in and then leaves. Uh, when they come back in the game, you know, after they have those first minor tweaks, is that more of them telling you, like, hey, I'm fine, I can go play? Like, how do you assess how those situations are, are handled? Yeah, Mark, Marcus is doing okay. Took a knee to knee, and then I just wanted to be precautious there, you know, throughout preseason. You know, I didn't, you know, feel like it was needed for him to get back in there after he went knee to knee. And then it's a collective process. You know, it's with the player, it's the medical, and myself. And ultimately, I make the, you know, the final call. But, you know, we want to know if they are clear to play, then we just make that decision. I think there's been some wonder about what you guys will do when Jaws not in the game at point guard. You started with Desmond and, and Marcus today. I'm just curious what what did you make of the job those two did together, and do you think that's a combination that's you know pretty good in the backcourt going forward? Yeah, I think it, it has the potential to be a good um, you know backcourt. Obviously, we saw it you know at the start of the season for a little bit. Um, you know, obviously we're trying to play a little bit different style right now. Um, but yeah, that's definitely on our mind. You know, when Jaws out of the game, how we're creating advantages. We still got to try to maintain the same pace. Even and with one of the best, you know, open court players in the game. Uh, I think those guys are doing a good job, you know, trying to get in that conditioning, you know, that sustainabil sustainability I keep talking about, you know, that pace that we want to play at. But those guys are really good playmakers. And as we continue to in include more of our ball screens, off ball screens, right now we're just trying to play out of our principles because that's going to enhance all the guys moving in, in, in the same, uh, you know, direction, whether it's a pick and roll, it's a drive, it's a cut, whatever it is. But I think those two guys, you know, who knows what the rotations are going to be when we get into the season. I think Scott He's doing a great job too. Uh, more guys that can push the pace, more guys that can initiate our offense. You know, whether it's drives or also off of our screening action, I'm very encouraged what those guys are definitely capable of. Coach, right here. Uh, you spoke about Scotty just then. Uh, he finished with nine points, roughly about on 20 minutes. Yeah, that's not really an appealing stat line. But when you look at the other, the rebounds, the assists, he finished with the highest plus minus of the team. Uh, did what, did you see his uh his impact on the court that reflect that stat line as well? Yeah, I mean, I think he's definitely a guy that, you know, it's not all about the points with him. He's going to set a tone with his defense. Um, you know, the disruptor, you know, full court, I think he's doing a great job with the full court pressure. You know, he had five assists tonight, you know, so he's, you know, improving his day after day just with the playmaking. Um, I think he's pushing the pace, trying to get into the paint. You know, he's got to clean up some of the times when he's playing in crowds. Um, but, you know, his stat line is definitely that plus minus. I mean, he can make an impact. Obviously, plus minus is a stat that can be skewed a lot of different ways, but you feel the pressure that he's putting on the opposition. You see the pace that he's playing with and, and trying to make uh, the right reads on the offensive side. And that's what's encouraging about his game right now. Coach, what did you think of the young guys tonight? And particularly, what did you think of Jalen Wills kind of providing the kind of two-way play on both defense and offense? Yeah, I mean, he keeps stacking days together. Um, I think a lot of, you know, teachable moments right now uh, on the defensive side, you know, had that kind of stretch where he's picking up some fouls. And, you know, I hit him as like, hey, man, you got to know coming in as a rookie, showing your hands and the technique's going to be, you know, even more paramount in your position. But I think he's doing a pretty good job on ball defense. I think he got to beat a couple of times here and he's hard on himself. You know, he understands that that defensive impact the effort he's given, the multiple effort, he's uh, taken that ownership, which is very impressive for a rookie. And then offensively, you know, as I said, he's playing with a lot of confidence, shooting the ball. You know, you know, I know the shots didn't like really fall for him tonight, but his cutting, his offensive rebounding, he's got a lot of tools in his belt. So it's just continuing to reveal itself day after day, and the the way he just competes every single day and, and plays with a lot of energy, and he's uh, he's taking advantage of each opportunity, which is very impressive. Great, thanks everybody. Appreciate it.